Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name's Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a Dirac Live calibrator. In this video, I'm concluding the review for the Revel M105 loudspeakers that you can see here to my right. Revel as a company was formed in the 1990s as part of the Harman Group. A big part of what Revel do behind the scenes is pure science. Harman spent many years and many dollars developing the perfect ABX blind testing conditions for speakers. And over the years of testing many different speakers, they've developed some serious data. That data has been used for the design of the Revel speakers throughout the company's history. Revel, thanks to being part of the Harman Group, have had the luxury of big budgets for their research and development. And this is all carried out in the Harman Center of Excellence in California. There is a very lovely brand video on the company website and I'll link that in the video description down below. Also on the company website is a nice flick through the company's history and a look at some of the speakers that they have created. When you look through the history, one thing really springs out and that is the company's focus on speakers for multi-channel use. And that's the same when you look at the speaker ranges that are available today, right from the architectural and the concerta entry level speakers through to the Ultima 2 flagship speaker ranges. The M105 form part of the Performer 3 series of speakers. They are the smaller of two bookshelf speakers and there are multiple size center speakers, floor standing speakers and subwoofers. Literally something there for everyone. On the website, Revel do go into some detail about what makes their Performer 3 speakers stand out in the market. They talk about resonance free transducers. The speaker drivers have a motor system that lowers distortion, even at high volumes. Ribbed aluminium driver cones actually prevent resonances and their cast aluminium frames do the same. The Performer 3 speakers use high order crossovers and the company say they do that to reduce distortion and to produce a clearer overall sound across a wide dynamic range. These crossovers also help with the speaker's timbral accuracy. Looking more closely at the M105s, they are designed to be a sleek, small footprint full range speaker. They feature a new waveguide to improve listening consistency across a wider area. The cabinets are made by Italian luxury cabinet makers and they are curved to improve their stiffness and reduce cabinet coloration. The ports are fluid modeled and have identical flares on both ends. This is to reduce compression and improve the distortion in the bass frequencies. The tweeter has an improved motor structure but more interestingly, it has an integrated acoustic lens waveguide that is based on a mathematical approach that matches the tweeter's dispersion to the low frequency driver's dispersion. This helps the speaker to give a very smooth response off axis. The M105s are a two-way design with a one inch tweeter and a five and a quarter mid bass driver. And they have only single speaker binding posts on their rear. They are rated at a minimum of 50 watts up to 120 watts and they are 86 decibel sensitivity. This is actually quite important and I'll talk about this more in a minute. The speakers come in either black, white or walnut finishes and I think they look really nice. I think the black rubbery sections surrounding the speaker drivers and the crown on top could easily split opinions. But overall, the M105s are a nice and unimposing speaker, in which case Revel have clearly achieved that design goal. But what do the Revel M105 sound like? Well, that is actually a really interesting one. When I first got the speakers, I actually spent a lot of time moving them around the listening room and trying them out in lots of different areas. Now I did this specifically because I wanted to test out the speaker's bass in different parts of my room, but I also wanted to see whether they would 3D image beyond the speakers. And I tried them near field, I tried them at medium distances, but they ended up sounding better where I would normally place them, where you'll see them in this song music sampler demonstration video that's already up in the channel, and I'll link that 
up there. I'd say from that testing, a soundstage with a lot of depth that goes beyond the speakers is not one of the M105's main strengths. Looking at the Dirac Live measurements for the M105's, they measure really smooth in the mid-range and the treble, with just a tendency to push a little bit around the 2.3 kilohertz tweeter crossover. The bass response was very impressive for a small speaker and aggressively rolled off from about 50 hertz. The speakers sound very smooth, just like how they measured. They are very smooth sounding speakers, in fact, and that is where I want to bring you back to talking more about amplifier power. I tried several different amplifiers with the M105 speakers and each one made them sound completely different. But the amplifier with the most power overall definitely sounded the best. The speakers had more life, more energy, more drive and definitely more low end presence. As I mentioned, the bass and low end is very impressive for a small bookshelf speaker, but not in a grab your attention kind of way, in a way that fools you into thinking you're listening to much bigger speakers. Something that I found very interesting listening to the M105 speakers is that music that's been recorded in a studio, for example, Ed Sheeran's X album or London Grammar, those albums sounded absolutely fantastic through the M105s. The tone, the vocal tones and timbral accuracy was just fantastic to listen to. And the vocals were big, full, rich and colorful. And again, a real treat to listen to. However, different styles of music, for example, music that has lots of brass instruments, like albums from Bria Skomberg, didn't have quite as much leading edge clarity as I would have liked. And that led to the instruments sounding smoother and softer than again I would like. Now this possibly could be to do with the Dirac Live curve that I'd set for the M105 speakers, that's something to bear in mind. Could also be down to the fact that the speakers just are really very transparent to what comes before them. They only really started to show their true colors to me once I bolted on the right type of amplifier and actually started to use some really high quality speaker cables. And I think that is something to bear in mind that if you wanna use these speakers and hear the best of them, then your full system is really going to have to be on its A game. It would have been really interesting to spend some time with the M105s and a much higher end a pre-amplifier and power amplifier combination. I think that would have really helped to get the best from the M105s. You know, some of you might think obviously that would be the case and I would agree. You wouldn't always advise using multiple thousands of pounds worth of integrated amplifiers or pre and power combinations with speakers at this price point, but I actually think you could easily justify it with these Rebel speakers. So my final thoughts, this is my first real experience listening to any Revel speakers for any serious period of time. It's been very interesting and I'm very impressed with not only how the Revel speakers look, but how they sound in a lot of ways. I've been really impressed with their vocal and mid-range timbral accuracy and how smooth they are and how easy to listen to they are. Their bass is extremely impressive for their size. The Revel M105s have a retail price of £1,599, and that is actually quite a good price for speakers of this quality, and you do get a lot of sound for your money. However, there's some seriously stiff competition in the bookshelf speaker market at around this price point. For example, the Kef R3 speakers are £1,300 and they're a freeway design. The Bowers & Wilkins 705S2 come in at just under £1,800 and, and that's before we even look at the speakers from Monitor Audio and all the other companies out there. The competition at this end of the market at this price point is fierce. So should you be spending your hard earned money on the Revel M105s? Well, once you power them with some really good quality electronics, they do pretty much everything right and nothing really wrong. But it could well be just a little too smooth for the audio files that like more fireworks and high frequency expression. But for the other audio files that are looking for a smooth, easy listen and very impressive bass from a really small and elegant package, these could be the ideal speakers for you. And I personally am now really interested to try speakers higher up in the Revel range because I think I will really like them. I hope you enjoyed this review and hope it's been useful. For a more in-depth written review, make sure you go and visit our website. The address is in the bar down below. There will also be a link 
in the video description. I want to thank Nintronics, the excellent Hi-Fi and AV dealership for loaning me this Revel sample for review. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and make sure you hit that notification bell for a nudge every time we create a new video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Take care, thanks for watching.